Hello YouTube! Wow, do we have a move in the stock market today. The S&P is up by 2.6%, the Nasdaq is up by 4.2%. Everything is pumping. Why? Jerome Powell spoke, gave us some really big updates, and uh, we're going to try to go through that all today and uh, just show how the technical chart is going to tell us what is happening. We need to discount what we feel or our feels and look at the tape because the tape is telling us a very clear story. So that's what we're going to try to get through today. It's going to be a little bit longer video. If you wouldn't mind, I would really appreciate a thumbs up, a comment. And if you've not already, please subscribe to the channel. We, do, we put out videos literally every single day. And uh, I think that um, the first thing that happened today is just that we got relief. So the worst case scenario is not what happened. And after we hear that, oh my goodness, maybe we're seeing peak hawkishness. Again, whether or not they're correct is a different story. We have to listen to what Jerome said. And the saying is, do not fight the Fed. What we were able to do is actually fill our upper gap here at 401.44 and then back off. So now what the weekly chart looks like is it's pretty bullish. And the key takeaway that Jerome told us today is that we're at neutral. So what does that mean? <laughs> the market is repricing. And if you were on the correct side of the trade or long, congratulations, you made a great trade today. We made a new high of the month. We're currently backtesting last week's high at roughly 400. We filled the daily gap. We continue to make progress to the upside. And again, uh, not that this is going to, this is, um, I don't know that this is going to be a healthy bull market or if it's even going to be a bull market, but off the lows, we are now up by uh, an impressive, uh, right? We're about 11% off the lows. We're halfway to a bull market. So whether or not you believe it, I said it before. Um, people are only going to believe this rally is real when we get to 400. When did that happen? Happened last week. People didn't believe it. Look at the comment section. What happened this week? Well, I'm, well, TBD, right? We'll see what people have to say today. Clearly, there's something else for us to worry about. And yes, there are still things to worry about. But the bull case in terms of evidence continues to build. So hopefully now you have a newfound respect for Mr. Market. If you've been overly bearish, it is okay to be bear. It is not okay to be perma bear. You need to know at what point um, your thesis becomes incorrect. So again, it's very important for us to know what team we want to be on, whether that is team risk reward, as I've called it before, or currently bullish. Um, again, risk reward does not mean this is what other people are going to say. For there to be oversized returns or return uh, risk versus reward, most people have to be looking in the other direction. Why? Because the probability is that we're going to go down. So what are most people talking about as they go and get groupthink, groupthink anywhere on social media or anywhere in general? Oh, well, definitely in a bear market. Everyone talking about recession. Yeah, recession is consensus and we'll find out tomorrow. So anyways, figure out which team you want to be on and then understand at what point you need to pivot. Because again, in our group, if you want to learn more about it, there will be a link in the description. Um, I talk a lot about this and I try to lead by example. I am not a perfect trader, but um, I am aiming to continuously improve, which means that I'm not trying to tell the stocks what they're doing. I'm trying to understand the story they're telling me. And the reaction I would have expected when we heard we're at neutral from Jerome, yeah, that's uh, pretty much what I would have expected. Um, a massive move that people get caught offside with and they keep shorting at each and, extra, at each and every extra point and then just enough extra pain to the upside or roughly $1.50 to almost 403 to really burn people who did not uh, did not cover when we got to the gap fill and uh, did not cover um, when we started pushing higher, right? Now they're just looking to get their money back and who knows what that price is. Um, so anyways, um, what I wanna do now is point out a clear pattern that was tradable and actionable today. Again, as technicians, again, if that's, if that's the reason why you're watching these videos, you're trying to be a technical analyst. So an analyst analyzes. An analyst does not say, oh, market bull, ooh, market bear. A market analyzes the data and tries to understand what it's telling us. And when I look at this chart, regardless of what people think or their feelings, it is classic textbook bullish. I don't know how else to say it. Beautiful cup and handle. Test the, uh, right, we tested the high here or, uh, right, the breakout area before actually getting to a new high of the month or a new high of the week as well. What happened? Well, classic bullish. We put in our head, we get over the short-term average or the 50, reclaim the VWAP, back test at the open, hold our uptrend, 
push off to test resistance before Jerome. Volume drops off, massive volume comes in, people are trapped, micro needs are lower, power pump it up. And now, yes, now we are coming off the highs. We're digesting a key area at 40.20. It's actually about 40.23, I believe, and 40.14. So there was some profit taken from me today. I've loved this move. I am stress-free. And I think that if you were receptive to knowing where you're wrong, um, you, were, you would have been receptive to where you're wrong when we're above the short-term price in the VWAP or about right here. We're already above the, uh, the 200 MA at about 39.32, which means we're already trending up on the long-term. And now we've reclaimed the short-term price. So where can we go? Up. That's how technicals work. And hopefully you're getting some value out of this video because I'm trying to provide the actionable plan that you probably needed today if you felt ill-prepared. Ill um, after we got through the key resistance here, what happened? Well, we push up to the high of the month, the high of the week, which was at about 4016. So what happens? Well, we blow through it. We back off slightly, close below. All right, we close the candle here at about, uh, we close at 4012, about four points below. Bulls, sorry, bears dip it slightly. We push over again. That's the cash market close on the final candle there. Now we got meta after hours with a disappointment. So yes, we're ticking down a little bit, but there is room for us to digest this current bull move before deciding if we go up or deciding if we're gonna go down. And uh, again, I'm, I'm not gonna talk about what's gonna happen for later. I think let's just try to understand what happened today. Again, if you're watching the video, I'm hoping that your goal is to understand, not to be, I told you so, or, oh my God, no, we're too bull, so it's definitely bear, or, oh my God, now we're definitely 100% bull. It's always, what if this, what if that? And with a bullish setup, over um, profit and loss, over long-term price, over short-term price, that means if we're gonna get an oversized move, it's gonna be to the upside. We can clear, like, so now, you, now we understand where we are. Well, we'll circle, we'll circle back on this shortly. Now let's understand what the Fed said and why it matters. The bulls had a party today, and this was an incredible day. 7% for Goog, 7% for Microsoft, almost 7 for Meta. Again, before the post-market here, now it's down. Um, Apple up 4, Amazon up 5, Tesla up 6. But if we zoom out, this is where it gets even more impressive, right? Those same pockets are actually a little bit more mixed now, but let's look at the last one month. Uh, there we go, right? We noticed that, oh, leadership is emerging. Let's go no group. And again, who has everyone said the stock market leaders are? Oh, Apple and Tesla. Well, those are the ones who are up the biggest percent in the last month, Apple and Tesla. So if this move is real, would we not expect to have our leaders lead? Yes. So we found some new leadership, but our leaders of yesterday are still our leaders of tomorrow. Apple was up dramatically. I think it's uh, over the 50 week moving average right now. And what happened? Well, we were told that we're going to lose revenue last quarter. We're not going to be able to make our phones. What a Tesla do. Man, Elon just cannot get out of the news. I don't want to talk about it, but again, talk about if bad news can't take us down, what can good news do? Like good earnings from Tesla or Apple just being the king. Up. Up more than every other company that matters. Wow. Okay. So the bulls are partying and the bears are crying. We're still technically in a bear market. We are halfway to the birth of a new bull market. Will we get there? I don't know. But if we do, um, I'm planning to make money. So now let's understand what Jerome told us because if we understand the tape and the reaction that we got here, um, can, we, can we now do a post-mortem to understand fundamentally what did Jerome say and why did the market just go risk on completely? And this is so important. Uh, I'm actually gonna just tell the story because there's more to tell. You can see all these tabs here, which are eventually gonna tell a story. If you're still watching, I would really appreciate a thumbs up and a comment because I would just really like to know where the audience is at in terms of, again, trying to understand where we are right now and then trying to predict where we could go tomorrow. So anyways, um, Powell tells us here that our thinking is that we want to get to moderately restrictive level by the end of this year. That means three to 3.5. Whether or not you agree with these numbers, this is what the Federal Reserve Chairman said today. And when we say don't fight the Fed, do not fight what Jerome says. Whether or not he's right or wrong, we'll find out as more data comes in. But as of right now, this is what he's telling us. He basically said we're at neutral. I think in hindsight, he probably should not have said that. He probably knows it as well. But here's where we are. So do we understand why we went up? Yeah, because they believe these numbers. And when Powell said it, the market's like, cool. Um, let's also think about this 3 and 3.5% before we dive a little bit deeper. Because if we now flip over to here and we look at uh, the 10-year treasury note, Again, 10-year treasury note implies what the interest rate will be for the next 10 years. Where do we peak out? 
3.497%. Do you now maybe understand the reason why we peaked out there and why we've been coming off the high? Because that is a moderate, moderately restrictive level by the end of this year. So in terms of the current rate height cycle, that is the peak, which is why the market went up. Peak hawkishness or peak that we're not going to get um, these same rates of, uh, in, of increases we've had so far. So now let's continue the story. It's time to go meeting by meeting basis, not provide clear guidance as before. So this actually means that we don't want to be tied to what the market is pricing in. The market is trying to front run or to price what the Fed's going to do. They now want to have flexibility and they finally have that. They have optionality. They got, uh, they got uh, um, different options they can use here. So something I forgot to mention before, but um, again, if you're still watching, I think that um, what's really important for people right now is to just understand what, uh, what can happen missing just two days in the stock market and it can ruin your portfolio. This is a video from 2020. It's still relevant today though. David Bowen, again, Chief Investment Officer at Citibank, um, is encouraging investors to be fully invested and uh, not to try to time the market. We'll ignore that part because I think we're at a different part. But again, this is a tried, tested, and true thing for investors. Uh, Balin says, if you miss just two of the biggest up days of the year over the past 10 years, your portfolio would have lost money. Again, let's read that one more time here. Let's zoom in really close to make sure we understand what this says. Balin says, if you missed just two of the biggest updates, uh, updates of year um, over the past 10 years, your portfolio would have lost money. So what happened today? Well, we had one of the biggest, I think the biggest update of the year. I don't know if it was, I, I don't know. I don't know what the exact biggest update was, but um, if you missed the move here, just since yesterday, again, S&P is up by, we have the numbers right here. Uh, as of a close, we're up 2.6 and 4.2. And if if you miss this move, that's one thing. If you were short, well, you lost exactly what we gained today. That is extremely painful. And psychologically, that is why we can go from an area of extreme fear to fear to now neutral by the people who were on the wrong side of the trade. If they've not already admitted they're wrong, as the technical price action confirms they're wrong, they're not going to do it. I don't know where the pain threshold is, but bulls like me are dipping their toes in. They're like, oh, yeah, right? Let's make some money. And that's the goal. So I think that there is the psychological component of we've had some terrific updates. So now let's keep that in mind, because if we truly did get a Fed pivot or a Fed put, um, what does that mean? Well, what the last meeting we had here, which was what? June 14, 15. Why is there, this, why is there, why is there an asterisk here? There's an asterisk bes uh, beside it because this is a meeting associated with the summary of economic projections. So in June, specifically June 15th, we heard about what the SEP from the Fed. I have it up. We'll look at that in a moment. But anyways, let's look at the chart first. So now let's go back here on June 15. Oh, my God. That was like uh, the day before the market bottomed. Yeah, there's June 15 right here. Right, put an arrow on it. It's the green day. Then what? We, we dumped down. But this ended up being the low of the year. Bears are like, I knew it. We're, we're red post pellet with a gap. Got to go down. New low of the year. Def 350, Def 320, Def 300. And no, um, that was the low where we began the accumulation. And again, ever since the, that day, we've had accumulation. Is it huge? No, it's the summer. The bears are still fighting it. So I would not expect to see an oversized bullish volume move. But with most candles closing hollow, it means we've closed higher than we've opened. I understand the reason why. Do I think this is healthy? Do I think this is what we should be doing? That's a different story. Again, yesterday I said, let the bears be right. I'll try to make the money. And that's where we're at now. Um, the bears have been proven wrong. The question is, will they continue to be proven wrong in the short term? Because long term, we're still we still have a lot of problems to get over. But if we understand that since June 15, again, June 15 right here, two down days, then boom, up, only up. Um, that was the day we had it. What I want to point you to now is the next time there's an asterisk, which means the next time the Fed is going to provide us with an SEP or summary of economic projections. That's in September when we get what? More data. They keep saying we're going to be data dependent. Maybe now you're tuning into what that means. It means September is when they're going to tell us whether or not we're going to continue to go higher. We know 3.5%. There's three meetings left. What does that mean? It means 25 or 50s. Or if we do 75 in September, that's pretty much it till the end of the year, front loaded. So unless they give us a new revision, this is likely where we're going to be. It's going to be a lot less 
um, oversize the now. Jerome did leave the door open to it. And again, removing forward guidance means that they're not going to hold their hand anymore. People have to place bets. The market will vote and we'll find out who's right and wrong. But there's roughly a two month window between July and September. What does that mean? If we've already been accumulating for one month and uh, sorry, a month and a half, and now we're actually over key resistance, over 400, we're forming support for us to what? Go up, go up more. That's what we need to keep in mind here. So if you've already missed the two best days of the year, figure out whether or not you're on the winning team. If you're not, it's time to switch or it's time to raise cash, get to the sidelines and reset yourself. There is still lots of time. There are months, but you need to be receptive to what point you are wrong and what point the data is supporting what we need to know. So now that we know that there's two months in between here, and I think there's going to be some other rhetoric, rhetoric walked back over the next few days, but this is what the Fed is saying. If you're not going to fight them for the next two months, we pretty much have an all clear. Does it mean it's going to be a straight line up or it's a guarantee we're going to go up? No. But now let's look at the numbers here. Let me just make sure I got things lined up properly here. Here we go. So you're probably wondering, yeah, well, the inflation this, blah, 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 that, recession this. Yes, uh, listen to everyone out there on Twitter or wherever you get your information from, but listen to Jerome. He is the Fed. He is the guy who makes the decisions. Don't fight the Fed. Don't fight Jerome. It doesn't matter what you think. The market cares what he thinks. And if he has to, again, from transitory to not transitory, did it blame Powell? No. They just adjusted to the data, right? The incoming data, blah, blah, blah. So here, again, change in real GDP. This is showing us that by 2024, we'll be back to 1.9. Unemployment rate at 4.1. PCE inflation at 2.2. And uh, core PCE at 2.3. So this is what's important. Projected appropriate policy path. 3.8, 3.8, 3.4. That is the Fed funds rate. That's the future. Like the Fed funds future discount rate. I'm sorry, infl uh, interest rate. Um, what this, again, changes in real GDP, blah, blah, blah. I just want to focus on these top ones here. Why? This is what Jerome pointed to today. He said, listen to this thing. And when I look at this, whether or not I believe it, because I don't, um, this is what the market is moving based on. So that's for 2024. We can look at 2023, blah, 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 right? 4%, 2.6% PCE, 2.7 here for, uh, for core. And that's by the end of the year. So if we now keep that in mind, why do these numbers matter? Because you're like, oh, but CPI is like at nine or 10. The Fed does not care about CPI. That's what you don't understand. They don't care about it. Why? Because it makes their job easier when they can control the data point that makes them look good. And PCE does that. Powell, we still need, we still think measure, uh, best measure on inflation is PCE. And what they care about is not just PCE, they care about, they care about core PCE. So you're probably wondering, man, what is core PCE? All I know about is CPI. Core PCE is defined as personal consumption expenditures, or PCE, prices excluding food and energy prices. So what you're probably wondering is, man, WTF, how do they measure this when people in the real world have to pay for food, food have to pay for energy, like getting to work and make the money? The Fed doesn't care, though. They see these things as being too volatile. The core PCE price index measures the prices paid by consumers for goods and services without the volatility caused by movements in food and energy prices to reveal underlying inflation trends, right? Blah, 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 blah. That's all you need to know. This is what the Fed cares about. Let's look at some numbers, Why? Right? Again, let's understand what's happening here. Easier way. Maybe even looking at the PCE we just looked at, the, the projection numbers. <coughs> so Fed's inflation battle, core PCE by end of this year, 4.3. For next year, 2.7. For year after that, 2.3. This is why the incoming data is going to be so, so, so important. But look at the numbers. Does it make sense now? Did we see the peak in the 10-year? I don't think so. I think we'll eventually we'll get to four. But things move in waves, right? They don't just go straight up or just go straight down. They go a little bit all around. All right, moving on. <coughs> Employment cost index on Friday will be an important indicator. What does that mean? It means this one right here. We get core PCE and we get consumer sentiment on Friday. Pay attention to these numbers. That's why they're red and underlined. Why? They're expected to be market moving. And Jerome just confirmed it. Core PCE, consumer sentiment come out on Friday. Tomorrow, we're going to have GDP. Uh, we have uh, recession as the consensus. So are we going to get uh, another big oversized move? I don't know, right? All I know is that we got through half the week 
and the most important data point, and we're at the high of the month for SPY. QQQ is not far off. So what does that mean? This is a bullish reaction. No matter what you think the news is, the reaction is bullish. The reaction is when you buy, you make money. When you go short, you lose. Is that the story that's going to continue till Friday? I do not know. But here's where we are. We got GDP in tomorrow. We got uh, French CPI and we got German CPI and French GDP and German GDP. And then for us in America, we got core PCE and consumer sentiment. So all I need to know is that if the trend of now is going to continue, we have the reasons why. If we're going to get what happens uh, after the last Fed meeting to tomorrow, I could see the data point to drive that. This GDP number tomorrow, everyone's like, oh my God, we got two negative quarters of contraction. That's a recession. And no, the White House has already redefined what a recession is. There has to be an agency that certifies it. So everyone who knows, right, they'll be like, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. There's a real recession, but not really. Um, just like the, what the Fed looks at. They look at core PCE, but they don't go to the grocery store. They don't go to the gas pump is what they're basically saying. And for us, we know out there, people are losing jobs. It's getting rough. And um, the data will confirm it later. So that's a problem for tomorrow, not a problem for today. So um, again, Meta came out with a sour reaction. It's now been long enough. The market's been closed. We can probably have a look at it for a preview. It's down uh, two bucks and it's stunk on earnings. It's down 1.6%. So up by 6.5 or $10 down by two. Cool. What about shop? Shop is basically filling its daily gap up 11%. And that was on them having a pretty bad earnings. They missed by 200% and they missed by 3% on revenue and they're laying off staff. Oh yeah, cool business doing so good. So what does that mean? Negative news is having a uh, muted reaction, but bullish news is having an oversized move up. That is classic bullish price action. That's how we carve out a bottom. Why? Because it's a process. It doesn't happen all at once. Uh, finally, um, for us to continue to have more arrows uh, in our quiver, um, what we need to know is what happens with Amazon and Apple for tomorrow. So for me, I have everything I need to see to continue to be bullish. It doesn't mean blind bull or always in or mega long. It means this is the base case. What is most likely going to happen now on the daily candle, which is the reason why you watch the daily videos, is probably up. If we get a down move tomorrow, it's probably going to be for buy-in. So now let's go through some levels and let's wrap it up. All right. So now we understand what happened, right? Cool. We got a bullish pattern here. Maybe let's actually, let's look at ES to understand why these levels matter because we've been going through earnings. We've been having a look at all this stuff and we want to just try to understand why those numbers matter. So the red line at 4020 is basically a pivot for me. And if we look on the weekly chart, it's a little bit easier to see here, right? It's where we have the real bodies on the weekly last week's high. And then we look at the daily and we recognize that, oh, that's kind of like where we started the big massive plunges where everyone started shorting the fuck out of the market. Yep, that was right here. So what did we just do? We just made the people who shorted the beginning of the big mega short lose. Now they're back to even. So that's why this level is so important. These are nasty candles here, right? Those three candles are nasty. We filled the gap. We're now at key resistance. We're going to back test. We'll find out. We're going to advance higher. We'll also find out. We got a bull bear trap here, sorry. We dip a lower double uptrend, bounce hard off the 50, and now we're at resistance. This is a pivot for us to either go higher or for us to back test where? Uh, potentially to form a higher low off the 50 or to break to the next level of resistance at roughly 4140. So that's what we need to watch out for here. Again, there's also like a W pattern forming in here or an ascending triangle, right? We see the ascending triangle. If you know what to look for, the market's screaming right now. You just have to know what movie it's telling you, what the story is, sorry. Um, if now we smooth the data out a little bit more and go to the weekly chart, um, we did not get our back test to 380.5 yet. All we got so far is the daily gap fill at roughly 389 filled, right? A back test, sorry. So what do we need? Well, for me to say that I am wrong, we're going to have to lose the wicks on this uptrend we are forming out of our falling wedge. What does that mean? We cannot fall below 380.54. That remains my area that I am wrong about the new bull market, and we're probably going to resume back down. If we don't back test it now and you're buying, you have to be ready for a back test here. That's roughly 5%. That would be enough pain for you to likely fold out. So if you missed this move, didn't have the balls to buy, that's okay. Just understand that you probably want to wait until next week now. Why? Because we need to know where we're going to stage the weekly low. Is it going to be a higher low versus this week? Is it going to go back and test the week of July 18th where it was 
Are you ready to lose about 15 points or about four to five percent? If you're not, now is not the time to be the superhero. Um, and again, if you're looking for a community of traders who are receptive to helping you, uh, might have experience, but they're not perfect and uh, have the tools like an algorithm to help you guide us all the way through this, which for me, by the way, it did. In the description, there will be a link for that if you want to find out more. And we're excited to announce that we're going to be rebranding and relaunching in roughly the next month. If you subscribe to the channel, we will update you on when that happens. And if not, I will leave you with the video where um, we talked about on the weekend in terms of how we could get to here. There's a lot more I would like to review, but in about 25 minutes, that is the most value I think I can deliver. <coughs> Thank you for watching. Look forward to seeing you on the next one.